guys, welcome back to another Melly Unfiltered podcast hosted by me, Melissa Melly Arroyo, where I talk about what's on my mind unfiltered. I'm just some random millennial age Christian who just likes to share about life and has different thoughts and opinions and here's where I share them. Also, you know, with my friends and stuff and family, but you know, also here. I love to share content because I hope that something I say can inspire you, uplift you, bring you closer to God, or just make you laugh or something. Um, so that's what I do. I want to thank newcomers for giving this a chance, and I want to thank the people who continue to support my content. I really, truly appreciate you guys. So today, we're going to be talking about listening for the voice of God, or also known as the Holy Spirit. Wow, this is something that is hard for me, I will admit. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot sit still too long. Um, it's funny because I am a counselor. It's my, one of my things I do, right? And I could sit there while I'm counseling people, but as soon as I'm out of that mode, my brain kind of goes back to default settings, which I'm working on. So being an active listener to others, that's pretty easy for me, okay? It's also my mind just going on and on and on and on and on. That happens. When I'm sitting in the counseling room, yes, I'm looking for information, things that can help a person weed through all the things, right? Okay, but in my day-to-day -day life, I could turn off that mode. But that mode turns into something else. It turns into like, hmm, what am I having for dinner? What am I, da da da? How can I help this person? And sometimes I just have to sit there, right? Especially when I'm trying to listen for the voice of God, when I'm trying to hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to get me to do. And if you're any Christian or if you're in, a, in the Christian faith but don't really know much about this, well, basically we're supposed to listen to the voice of God. We're supposed to follow the commandments. That includes the Bible. That includes, that's already written form, and also God guides us through the Holy Spirit. Um, that's why Jesus blew into the ears of his disciples. <laughs> I can't say disciples. Okay, there you go. Because he, or not in the ears, but blew on the disciples because he was instilling the Holy Spirit in them and giving them that new breath of life. So that being said, he also gave instructions on this and, but not very clearly did he give the step-by-step -step guide of like, ah, this is what it's gonna sound like exactly. There's no distinct voice that you need to listen for as far as like, it sounds like a different person. It is sometimes a tugging at your heart, something that weighs heavily on you. You just feel something. And there's a difference between an anxious feeling and this feeling. This feeling kind of feels like, oh, I feel like I should say something or, man, let me really think about this. And there's just like this sense of clarity. Sometimes it could be very hard to listen to the voice of God because like me, you're very busy or you have a lot on your mind and you have to make sure that you set aside the time to really sit there and listen. It's hard to listen to something when you have a lot of background stuff going on. And so just a disclaimer, this is not the same as meditation. And even if it was, there are a few minor things that are different. Well, major things. God, right? Meditation, depending on what you're looking it to do you can meditate on the word of god really mull over all right what what is the message behind this yes and also what we're looking for is discernment what we're looking for is clarity of what we need to do or not do and the conviction that comes with it so the holy spirit brings a lot forward in meditation there is this idea. I think a lot of people associate it with like that, the Eastern religions and philosophies of, oh, I'm gonna sit there and think of nothing kind of thing. And while in meditation, it is more to focus your mind onto something so that 
things move through your head and don't get stuck in there and instead of it being the main focal point of all the things you have to do or all that thing that's flowing through your head it is background noise like if you ever had background noise you know at a party usually it's really loud well that's a bad example at a cafe have you ever, have you ever been to a cafe or something there's background music you could hear the person that's talking to you right and you're having a great conversation you're really listening to them maybe at a restaurant restaurants could be loud but let's say it's during a time where there's not as many people there's background music so you don't really it doesn't really overpower the person that you're talking to and you're just really focusing in and honing in especially if it's something important that this person is telling you that is kind of like that and sometimes whenever we're trying to sit in that silence usually it's best in solitude in silence <laughs> which i'm i don't want to say bad at both and i can't say that i yeah that i don't like it i do like it i just don't always set aside that time i lately i've been doing it every morning however it doesn't mean that i've had solitude and silence sometimes it'd be other people in the house making noise sometimes it's my dogs trying to get my attention for food water go to the restroom for cuddles and so sometimes I have to pause and then refocus once I take care of the things or really set boundaries <laughs> or really put myself in a situation where I know like, okay, usually it's very quiet at this time. Lately, I've been doing this around 6.45, 7 a.m. Usually it's quiet at that time. And so it's been working. I start off by having something because I need something to hold on to. So I'll either listen to a prayer, a meditation, a reading of the Bible. I use a Hollow app often, quite frankly, because it really, it, they already have great stuff and content I haven't found to be terrible or inaccurate or anything. So great stuff. Highly recommend. I'm not in partnership with them, but I wouldn't mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, my numbers are way too small for that. <laughs> way too small. Um, so in that meditative state, it's more, like I said, it's, I think the word I'm looking for is contemplative because you're also adding in the layer of that discernment and really trying to really see what's coming in, right? Whenever you do hear something, but first hearing the voice, you have to allow room for it. So setting aside, put a timer on for at least a minute. If you struggle with silence, start off small. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Maybe start off with a verse or a chapter, whatever you have time for. Because sometimes we have to work with our schedules, but we really want to make God the center of our lives. And we have so many competing things going on that it feels hard to do but we can do it in smaller increments to make sure that we're making the time for God because that's what's important to us. It doesn't mean you have to completely become a missionary, a priest, a nun, a pastor, you know, devoting yourself in that manner. Sometimes it's in, okay, I'm eating some cereal right now. As soon as I'm done or whatever breakfast you eat, um, usually I have eggs, <laughs> not that that matters. Um, and just really allowing yourself like, okay, this is a time where it's usually quiet at my house or where it's quiet enough because sometimes there is going to be background noises and we have to learn to focus again, like the, what, uh, the examples that I give, like if you're at a coffee shop and if you're talking to a dear friend and you're really honing in and trying to focus on what they're saying, same thing. So something that can get you hooked on that is, like I said, reading scripture, having something in the background already made, pre-made with um, prayers is another one, and just repeating maybe the word Jesus or something that helps you focus and anchor in. And this is not a mantra. This is stating the word, asking the Holy Spirit to come to, um, come Holy Spirit is another one that I hear often. And... Holy Spirit, speak to me. God, speak to me. Jesus, be with me. I surrender. There's so many different things that we can say or do. 
And so this topic has been near and dear to my heart recently. I've been taking this class, and I'll get back to the subject. I've been taking this class lately that's been great and amazing. And it's about being the good news to everyone, essentially. Living my life in a way where I can share my love of God in many different ways, whether it's having some quality time with friends, sharing a meal with people, doesn't necessarily just have to be my friends. I'm listening to people well, and listening to the Holy Spirit, and doing actions, doing small acts of kindness, and you know, those are things that are already new, but it's good to have the refresher, and also being with the community of people who really love Jesus and really want to be the good news out into the world. I really appreciate it. It's a great class. So back to listening to the voice of God. So learning to set aside time and focusing our minds so we could try to hear that voice. And the voice of God is not, I mean, so maybe it could sound like certain things, but usually it sounds kind of like a, a, just our own personal thoughts, really. Um, it could be something like oh, something you read that pops into your head. Um, and everyone's minds work differently. Some minds are more visual, some are more auditory, some don't have either, some have all the things. And yeah, that's a weird study that I came across and it's really cool to know. So it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong if you don't hear anything. Sometimes it could be a sense of just like knowing something like, ah, aha, got a light bulb moment. This came to me. Let me pray about it. And you'll know if it's not from God specifically, if it does not align with scripture. Yeah, definite clue that wasn't of God. <laughs> So the things that can pop up, like, hey, maybe I should call this friend. You know what? Let me call them. Let me call my aunt. Let me send texts. Let me leave a little bit early to work today. There are different things that end up happening. And it feels, for me, it's kind of like a sense of my body feels like it needs to do something. And I just... I have a random thought pop into my head. I'm like, is that is that it? And then check in with God and see how it works. And sometimes I can be disobedient. Sometimes I have that yearning and pulling in my spirit and I feel it in my body. I'm like, I really should talk to this person. I think I need to say something and I don't. And then I feel really like heavy for not doing so. There's different things that end up happening. Um, and the heaviness is not like guilt or anything. It's more like, oh man, like, I think that was something important to do. So learning to listen for that voice requires that solitude meditation, knowing your scripture as well. It's not a prerequisite by a sense, but that's also a way to discern if it is from God or not from God, because spirits can be tricky. They could be trying to put in a message that is not of God. So we do have to test that. So the best way is knowing scripture. Of course, you could type it up on your Bible app or online to see if something's in scripture to see if it aligns. Um, but if you know, it kind of like, I don't know the whole Bible, to be honest. I can't quote scripture like exactly verbatim. I'm not like that type of person. I can tell you more or less how something goes. It's kind of like storytelling type thing. Um, I mean, it's still accurate. And I don't change things. It's just, it's a little different for me. So I don't say verbatim. <laughs> um, and I think listening to the, for the voice of God is something that we just need to practice. I say we because I know it's a me thing too, or we continue to do it over and over again and over time it gets easier and easier. And if you fall off of it, go ahead and start again. It's okay. Sometimes I have those really busy times of the year and I find myself, oh, I haven't been meditating every morning. I haven't been in contem contemplative prayer. And so that's another way to say that. I've been so distracted. Let me get realigned. 
and it could change throughout the year. Sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's in the middle of the day, in the afternoon. It just really depends before bed. Um, and this doesn't include like regular prayer time. This is like specifically set aside time to really hone in on the voice of God, not just pray to God, but sit down and really try to listen. Try to refocus my mind as it wanders back onto, all right, God, I'm listening for you. So I hope this was somewhat helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're on YouTube. I don't think you could do this on Spotify, but let me know on YouTube if you're in the comment section how it works for you to hear the voice of God, what it's like for you, what meditative practices have you done or contemplative prayers. What has worked for you to listen in to God? All right, guys, I'll catch you for another Million Filter podcast in the future. Hopefully. Take care.